Hello, my name is Frank Smetana. I work in product marketing here at Dimensional Insight, and I'll be your host for this webinar titled Revenue and Expense Management. Get to the numbers behind your numbers. Nancy Berkowitz, DI's Vice President, who has worked with many organizations to address their reporting and analysis needs, will also be joining us for the Q&A at the end of the webinar. So let's get started. The very financial systems that organizations rely on to manage their business day to day often fall short in the area of revenue and expense management. Our customers told us that these shortcomings with their existing financial systems became painfully obvious each time they closed the books on a month or quarter. You may be seeing similar bottlenecks in your organization. So we'll start by discussing the gap between existing financial systems and fast, secure, and consistent revenue and expense management solutions. We'll then share with you how Dimensional Insight is helping customers gain visibility into and insight from their existing financial systems. So we work in tandem with your ERP and accounting systems such as J.D. Edwards, Harris, Lawson. We don't replace those systems. How do you know it's time to consider an integrated revenue and expense management solution? Let's go through some of the pain points our customers encountered back when they were still using spreadsheets to analyze expenses and revenues against budgets and targets. So we'll do this in the context of fictitious company, Premium Brands, Premium Brands is a supplier of fine beverages. Every manager in Premium Brands is held accountable by the CEO for their performance against budget. The CFO and Finance Department own the general ledger which holds the data that managers throughout the organization rely on to assess their performance. We have VPs accountable for entire divisions, directors under them responsible for several departments, and finally, department managers held accountable for a single department. So when finance closes the books at the end of each fiscal period, they send out P&L reports to every manager in the organization, showing their performance against budget. The managers look at these reports and try to explain why they are over budget on a particular expense or lagging on a certain revenue target. Neither is a good thing, which is why they're probably getting asked about it in the first place by their manager. So then the managers start emailing finance, asking for more details and information. Some of those emails likely contain unsecured spreadsheets showing potentially sensitive numbers. And this can go on for weeks until a budget overage is successfully explained. Now multiply that times hundreds if not thousands of separate budget deviations across an organization and you can see why this becomes such a pinch point. Now why does this take so long? Well, there's a second org chart and it's the data org chart. So the general ledger and accounts receivable are typically over there with finance department. Inventory management is probably owned by operations. Payroll, which may actually be a feed from a third-party payroll services provider, is owned by HR. And accounts payable probably sits over here under procurement. On top of that, you probably have quite the collection of budgets, forecasts, targets, which could be stored in a BI tool, a corporate performance management system, or most likely a complicated maze of Excel spreadsheets. So the ability to efficiently, securely, and consistently bridge all of these disparate corporate data silos and link all of that transactional data to their corresponding GL journal entries is a critical requirement. Let's look at some pain points. So if you're running an older system, general ledger, ERP, accounting software, tends to have limited reporting capabilities. There's not this concept of self-service reporting built into these tools. Highly IT dependent for any changes and fairly limited. You can do some decent reporting out of the general ledger, but when you have to access information from all the disparate ancillary systems, good luck. Another pain point, you spend a lot of time searching around for the right numbers instead of using one version of the numbers to solve budget overage issues. So people start arguing about whose spreadsheet is correct 
based on which system they dug those numbers out of. That's the wrong way to go about things. Everybody needs to be working from one single consistent view of the numbers across the entire organization. And finally, when you don't have self-service reporting and analytics, your finance department tends to get overloaded with requests for one-off reports and special analysis, all because managers and directors and VPs don't have the tools to do that analysis themselves. So at the end of the day, how easy is it for managers across your organization to pinpoint budget and revenue issues and also spot opportunities and then take action based on what they're getting out of their financial systems? So what we hope to do in this webinar is show you how to quickly identify which business unit or product line or department or individual is experiencing significant budget overage issues and get on top of that issue while it's still small. And once we've identified hot spots around the organization, we want to empower the responsible individual to explain their over budget expenses by letting those people get at the numbers, the invoices, and the purchase orders behind those general ledger journal entries to gain potentially some actionable insights. And we hope to do that without involving IT in the finance department. And finally, we're going to show you some ways to compare performance between departments, individuals, or product lines adjusted by non-financial measures such as headcount and productivity. So you add some real context to comparisons instead of just comparing raw numbers. Let's take a look at the DI General Ledger Advisor. So each of these buttons across the bottom of the screen can be thought of as a slightly different view of corporate financial data. And each of these views serves a specific role and helps you investigate or gain insight into problems from a different angle. So I'm going to log in as a high-level user, the CEO. And the CEO this morning is interested in just looking at the overall P&L report for the entire organization. And what he sees on this P&L report is actual versus budget for the current month, some historic context framed in year to date, and that person sees the percent variance calculated for each of those values. Typically, when we're looking at expenses, we don't want to see high positive numbers because this means we're way over budget. Never a good thing. So, we can also filter this down. Right now we're looking at all values, all individuals across the company. Maybe the CEO wants to look at a particular operating unit. Maybe they want to look at a VP or one of the directors underneath those VPs. Or maybe they want to focus on a particular brand or product line this morning. And they can click through this see expenses. There could be dozens or hundreds of pages in this, depending on how involved the underlying general ledger is. And what this allows an individual to do is to focus on this percent variance column and see where the big overage is. And I'm looking up here 15.9 percent over on a small item like bank charges. I'm, I'm not going to get too upset about that, but, but this one kind of caught my eye. Shipping supplies. This is a big item and wow, I'm 38% over and on a year to date basis, I'm 17% over. So there's something going on with shipping supplies that we need to drill down into sometime today or start asking the right individuals some questions. And typically when a high level user logs into General Ledger Advisor, <clears throat> this is set to hide detail because they're not really interested in details. but if you want to take a look at detailed data, you can click on include data and then we get more detail underneath each expense category. So the P&L statement tells us everything about an individual or a department and their performance against budget, but sometimes it's helpful to compare a group of departments against each other or a couple of VPs. So this helps us find out where we should be focusing attention and resources. Laggards are probably experiencing legitimate issues with budget overage, so we need to be able to get on top of that quickly. So now we're re transitioning from reporting to analytics. This time I'm going to click on the comparison 
view. And from here, I can sort on salaries and benefits, for example. Um, I can look at their performance against budget, against flex budgets, last year's performance, forecasts, and I can set this threshold percent so maybe I don't want to see so many arrows. I want to see only the true problem cases. So let's do that. Let's set it to 25 and see what happens. When we do that, all of a sudden we see this person here at the bottom, this vice president, Wendy Phillips, and she has got real issues where everybody else was sort of, yeah, having issues, but only at the 10% threshold. What can I do to take a, a further look at Wendy? Well, I can take a look at her 24 month trend for salaries and benefits. And nothing too big going on here, seems pretty flat, but I noticed that she was at a low point here a couple months ago, and now she seems to be climbing again. So something to keep in mind, but nothing too significant. I'm going to look at the metric detail for Wendy. And this is just the P&L report sort of reformatted differently. And it's more than that because I'm showing you against all of the metrics, flex budget and last year, um, how her performance is. And we see that, yeah, this, this month she's doing pretty badly, but year to date, yeah, she's high, but still not that bad. So there's a trend going on there, but it's not too alarming. So what else can I do? Well, she's a VP. She probably has a couple directors underneath her. So let's take a look at, at Wendy's directors. So now we're going a level deeper. We're going from Wendy Phillips VP to the two directors that are underneath her. When we do that, we see that Crystal Boyd, the first director, is also getting flagged with high salaries and benefits. So maybe she's what's contributing to Wendy Phillips' high numbers. And so we'll do another 24 month trend, see what we can find out. And now it gets interesting because here I'm, I'm graphing regular labor expenditures against overtime labor expenditures. And look what's going on here. Her, her regular labor costs are, are dropping off, I would say rather dramatically, yet she's incurring increasingly higher overtime to the point where Overtime has been running higher than regular labor for five months. So now, now we're getting somewhere. Now we can see that we have some real informed questions to ask Crystal Boyd. Is she having scheduling issues? Uh, too much uh, off time or sick time or, or vacation in her department? What's, what's explaining these alarming trends in her data? And how do, we, how do we craft a plan, an action plan to bring that overtime labor cost back down where it belongs. So these are some of the ways that the GL advisor very quickly with just a, a few clicks, we got to where the hotspot was. And now we get back to the PNL view, but notice unlike the CEO's view, we're focused on a particular vice president and a particular director. And from here, we can do some more drill down. We can get to any level of detail we want. So the P&L report has now, we've gone full circle from the P&L report to comparisons and back to the P&L report. So I'm the vice president and I'm looking at, or I'm the CEO and I'm looking at my vice presidents. I'm looking at Ashley and Pete here in the first two rows. And I'm like, wow, Pete's really high on salaries and benefits, but you know, he's also got slightly higher revenue than Ashley, but wow. What really stands out is Ashley's salaries and benefits are so much lower relative to revenue than, than Pete's are. They're completely inverted. So what's behind all that? So what I need is I need more than just raw number comparisons. I need to have some context. So we need to put our comparisons, we need to wrap them in some context because we know all departments are not created equal. Luckily, Organizations, yours may already be doing this, they track size and volume information as single-sided GL entries, basically numbers that are not financial entries. And we can use those to place information into context. So now we're not comparing an 80-person department against a three-person department. We're truly comparing apples to apples, and that's really valuable. So this time I'm gonna click on the Divisor Analysis tab. 
and this looks a lot like the comparison tabs that we just saw, except now we have this new column, the visor amount. And what's interesting here is when we view it in terms of productive hours, that huge difference between Ashley and Pete suddenly flips slightly, where Ashley looks like she's actually spending more on salaries and benefits adjusted for productive hours. So this is enormously useful because we were looking at Pete going, wow, he's just got crazy salaries and benefits, yet there's a perfectly legitimate reason for that. Viewed under productive hours, Pete's department gets more done, hence has lower salary and benefits costs. But we can flip this, and again, these divisors are completely configurable based on what you're already storing in your financial systems. Let's say, since we're a, a supply company, let's look at cases shipped. And now, it looks like Pete is doing way worse than Ashley. So, again, there's a human element to this. The CFO may have perfectly legitimate reasons for viewing certain directors or VPs using one divisor and a completely different divisor for the other. But the point is the capability is there. So you can really do some interesting analysis based on which divisors you incorporate into the general ledger advisor. So let's take a look at what a department manager sees. These are the people sitting below VPs, below directors. They're running an individual department. And when we log in as that individual, we have a more limited range of choices down here at the bottom because this manager is interested in one thing and one thing only. And that's the P&L for their department, their area of responsibility. They obviously can't see anything above them because then they'd be looking at other department managers' numbers. So this is secure and consistent in that if the CEO logs in to this particular data view, they are going to see exactly the same numbers as the shipping department manager sees right now. So we mentioned at the beginning of the presentation that the CEO had done a, a quick glance through his P&L report and he saw that shipping supplies were trending up. And so he said something to the director and the director called up the shipping department manager and said, hey, what's up with that? So shipping manager logs in and says, wow, look at this. Plywood shipping containers are really going through the roof. I wonder why. So let's see how GL Advisor can help them. Start with the 24 month trend, clicks on that. And yes, indeed, there's a trend. For months, we weren't buying any plywood shipping containers. Then in the course of three, four months, we suddenly hit historic highs, at least relative to the last two years, and now it seems we're, we're aiming to take out that historic high. So there's definitely something going on here that I need to get my hands around. So what else can I find out? Well, I can look at the GL transactions for plywood shipping containers. And this is what comes up. And in most general ledger and financial reporting systems, this is the end of the trail. You've got a summarized accounts payable posted here. It could just as well be from inventory management or accounts receivable or payroll. But the point is, this doesn't tell us anything that we didn't already know. We know that we're running 13,210 and that there's a single batch posting from accounts payable. So here's where the real value of General Ledger Advisor comes in. Remember this diagram? We have all of these disparate corporate data silos. Well, General Ledger Advisor lets you jump into any one of those. So now we can see the underlying AP transactions for that single summary batch that got posted to the General Ledger Advisor. And when we do that, things suddenly get really interesting. Now we're down at the lowest level detail, and this isn't even stored in the general ledger. It's out in accounts payable. I'm the shipping manager, and I see, okay, we've always, for years, as long as I've run this department, ordered from Hollister Wood Products. And they always gave us a decent price, 310 bucks. What's going on here? Toward the end of the month, we suddenly start ordering from a new vendor, and instead of 310, I'm now paying 490 per unit. So now I've got all kinds of questions I'm going to be asking the purchasing department or whoever is responsible for this particular purchase. I want to know 
the the other thing that's happening is i can see my quantities are going up so is there something going on the company that's demanding more plywood shipping containers that hollister would product perhaps not meet our demand did they go out of business I've, I've got all kinds of questions all of a sudden that i'm going to be asking so this is another example of how general ledger advisor with just a few clicks gets you exactly to the level of detail that lets you start answering some of your questions so hopefully we've shown you in this brief webinar how we provide self-service reporting and analytics to everybody in your organization that's accountable for performance against budget and revenue targets we showed you how to quickly identify which business unit or product line is experiencing significant budget overage issues Maybe we've shown you how we can explain those budget issues by getting to the numbers and the invoices that are behind those general ledger journal entries. And I've shown you some ways to compare peer and department performance adjusted by various non-financial metrics. And finally, and hopefully most importantly, once we've explained our budget variance, we've gotten some actionable insights that can help us stamp out the causes of budget deviations, which is the point of this exercise in the first place. So with the right information delivery options, robust data integration of all of these disparate corporate data silos, and powerful analytical capabilities, hopefully we've shown you how General Ledger Advisor can meet your financial and revenue and expense reporting needs. A little bit about Dimensional Insight. We are a software technology company exclusively focused on business technology and solutions. We've helped more than 2,600 customers around the world successfully deploy effective business intelligence solutions. Our product, the Diver Solution, is a cost-effective end-to-end product set that provides everything you need to create sophisticated analytics applications and successfully deploy them throughout your organization. We have 2,600 customers scattered across distribution, supply, manufacturing, healthcare, and technology. And with that, I want to thank you for attending today's webinar, and I'm going to turn it over to our VP, Nancy Berkowitz, for questions. Hi, my name is Nancy Berkowitz, and I'm a Vice President from Dimensional Insight. I understand some of you might have some questions regarding our GL. I hope you learned a lot from the presentation that Frank just made. Oh, I see a question here. Uh, this one is from Jennifer. Jennifer asked, when I drill into salary numbers, I want to see information from JDE payroll. Is that something we can do? Jennifer, absolutely. The back-end data for the GL transaction can come from just about anywhere financials, payroll, other JDE modules, or non-JDE systems. As long as we can identify the account and the GL period for the transaction and the backup data, we can integrate it with the main reports in the GL advisor. Oh, I see someone else has a question. Uh, Howard is asking, what is the implementation time frame? That's a great question, Howard. Our, typical answer is that we can implement the base GL advisor in one to two weeks of real time. We spread that out over about a month of calendar time though because as we go through it we will need your input so that you can review and ensure that what we are doing for you looks correct and that the data from the ancillary systems is available and ready to use. So I see another question. This one comes from Susan. And Susan is asking, do I need to purchase your BI application in order to use the GL Advisor? Susan, the answer is no. You do not have to purchase it in order to use the GL Advisor. However, the GL Advisor is built on our Diver Solution technology, but it's licensed separately and it's different. It is a turnkey application. So the answer is no, you do not need to purchase our diver solution. Any other questions? Well, I think that does it for us. I want to thank everybody for attending today's webinar, and we look forward to hearing from you. Have a great day.